The last serious effort for immigration reform, which happened 2006-2007, um, was stopped by a minority, these very extremist, nativist groups. These include FAIR, Numbers USA, the Center for Immigration Studies, all of whom come from the same network, founded by this guy called John Tanton. Basically, he's a eugenicist. I mean, he believes that um, this country should remain a white Anglo-Saxon country. I've come to the point of view that for European-American society and culture to persist requires a European-American majority, and a clear one at that. People talk about the problem of integration. Well, immigration, this country has always dealt with that problem of integration. We've had uh, all throughout our history a, a series of waves of immigrants. There's no difference between um, the way people used to talk about the Irish or the Polish or the Italian and the way some people talk about the Mexicans and the Latinos today is exactly the same. All the fears raised in the immigration debate comes from xenophobia. A, a, a lot of it does, let's put it that way. You shouldn't be scared. My God, this country has shown us so many times that these immigrants become Americans within one generation. Why are you freaking out? The, uh, the, the, the funniest thing about these xenophobes is that so many of them profess to love America and love American history. They're obviously the worst students of it. The demographics are changing. It's not a traditional America anymore. And now the president, who's waging a war on traditional America. The white establishment is now the minority. We must not fundamentally transform America as some would want. We must restore America and restore her honor. But I think when statements like that are made, it sends a sense of fear into the reader, into the audience, into the listener of like, oh, they're different from me. We're not the same and I should be scared of that. I grew up and I lived in, a, in an all white town and I went to an all white school. and We didn't have gangs, we didn't have, um, you know, violence uh, on, on the scale we have today. 57% of uh, our American population are uh, uh, non-white and 40 Seven percent are, forty-three percent are white, and uh, this is a big change. Integration was forced upon white America at the point of a bayonet. Enforcement is always the first thing that people propose when it comes to immigration reform because it's the easiest thing to propose. Just get a whole bunch of soldiers, a whole bunch of guns, a whole bunch of fence, and a whole bunch of drones, and therefore the immigration problem gets solved. The focus of immigration policy in this country became enforcement. As the, as, as the Latino population grew in the United States, there was, there was already a reaction. So that reaction turned into a series of laws or anti-immigrant laws and, and pressure into the federal government to actually start deporting more and more people and enforcing immigration laws in a, stringent, in a more stringent way. It's almost like you're being sold a bill of goods. It's like. Well, you know, we're going to have reform and we're going to have to, you know, keep the enforcement up and, you know, and the deportations will still go up and, you know, we're still going to separate families because, you know, we want that balanced immigration and we need to step back for a second as a country and say, you know, why, why are we doing this? You know, why is there this emphasis on enforcement? The number of deportation cases hits a record high. ICE expects to keep increasing the number of expulsions. The number of people deported more than doubled. The easiest image for the American media to use when it comes to immigrants is right on the border. It is of streams of people coming in, snake either swimming through the Rio Grande or lining up or walking through miles in lines across the Sonoran Desert. And those images just make it seem like it really is a true invasion. It, it's sensationalized. That's what the media does. Media always sensationalizes. The media always simplifies the issues at hand so when the American public sees all these people coming into the United States then the easy response is okay let's stop it by putting a bunch of military men there good fences make for good neighbors I believe in securing our borders our borders are not secure securing our borders we have made inf historic investments in manpower technology and infrastructure to help secure our borders I think the answer is you put up a fence a fence Electric wiring that stings people that they can't get through and they can't clip. Continue building the 18 foot high fence. 
Americans have always equated immigrants with criminality just because the vast majority of immigrants who have come to this country historically have been poor, but this idea of Mexicans being this criminal species of people. Couple that then with stereotypes that people have about Mexicans, whether immigrant or not, the bandito, the spicy senorita, and you have a marriage of really scary, uh, it really has a scary outcome for a lot of Americans. Like, oh my God, a Mexican and a Mexican immigrant? They're born criminals. Uh, we should be scared of them. And now they're coming into our country, into areas they've never been to before. Obviously, they only come here for nefarious purposes, so we should really be scared of them and we should do anything possible to stop them from coming here. The logic is immigrants are criminals and immigrants are Latinos. So hence, Latinos are criminals. You listen to Fox News. You listen to AM radio and you hear like all these people just saying, should go to the back of the line, they're illegal, they're criminals, without ever once mentioning the human interest story. And what happens if one of these released illegals does something illegal? I mean, what if there's a crime committed as a result of this? Somebody comes across the border in the middle of the night. Why are they doing that? Really, three reasons. One, they're terrorists. Two, they're escaping the law. Or three, they're hungry. They can't make a living in their own dirtbag country. Right now, the drug smugglers from Mexico have bases in 1,000 cities in the United States. Why do we think that? Well, we know they're criminal. Uh, a lot of these uh, human traffickers, especially sex trafficking, are controlled and owned by liberal media interests. Americans will always insist that immigrants are here to exploit Americans, whether by welfare, but whether by stealing from you, because again, that is in their mind that the immigrant class is a criminal class and they're lazy. The government is promoting a gateway for new citizens to take advantage of government benefits. And they come to this country and Democrats instantly get them on welfare, instantly get them, get, get them having illegitimate children. The Department of Homeland Security basically serving as a menu of handouts and giveaways that they can jump on. We are importing a lot of people into this country who are not contributing. They know how to game our, uh, all our benefits. They're on food stamps, they go to the hospital, they get free education, they get free medical care. I know a lot of people from Mexico, they're just here for the money. They just want to earn the money. They don't even want to be here. I got this amazing question one time in my Ask a Mexican column. Somebody asked me, whatever happened to the lazy Mexican? Because I hear nowadays they're stealing our jobs. And what happens with uh, the American mentality and immigrants, it's a bifurcated position. They're either incredibly lazy or they're stealing everything we have and they're trying to leech off of us. Beatings and deaths at the hands of Border Patrol agents. An immigrant being beaten and tasered by Customs and Border Protection, Valeria Munique Tachikin was shot several times by a Border Patrol agent as he served an arrest warrant for someone else. People love to demonize immigrants. People love to dream about all the punishments that illegal immigrants should go through. Pick up your property, take your money, and go home. And when they do that, the problem is basically solved. We're not saying they have to be deported by ICE. Let them live in, in the United States as the illegals in the shadows until they decide to go home. This country was always about that dream, the American dream to come here and find a better life and having your family here. What we have had in the last 20 years, this sort of enforcement only strategy is not the path to continue to follow into the future because it's hurting immigrants and it's hurting the United States economic future. 